Wonderful thing. Everyone with hindsight that's gets it in right. Russia. In Russia, that's what the revolution was during the war. All but Germany didn't have a revolution. It had a war, yeah, Germany and had it a revolution. lost it. At the end of it, when the Kaiser was overthrown, there was an actual revolution. Nothing that counts. What do you mean, nothing that counts? Nothing that counts. What, the count? allies. What do you say that counts? The allies were the people who made the decision as to what would or would not take place in Germany after the First World War. Now, what they decided was a fairly draconian system, yeah. if you like. However, what were their alternatives? And how could they have envisioned what actually happened? They couldn't have known. <laughs> you, can look, you can look back and read it in a 19-pound history book, but I'm afraid the history book wasn't written then because it hadn't happened. They had to predict the future. All you've got to do is criticise the past. That's a doddle. Well, not for you it isn't, but for grown-ups it is. How do David? Hello. Good night. How do Jimmy? It's not Jimmy, this is. How do Jimmy? Uh, there was a rad on before talking about drunk driving. Well, he wasn't actually talking about drunk driving, well, he was but he, he would was have been. To. And? And um, what, I, what I reckon he was trying to say is, you know when um, people come out of pubs, I think they should put a policeman outside each pub. Jimmy? Yeah? The gentleman that was on a little earlier, who you reckon tried to say something, actually made a very specific statement. He said, policemen should go into the pubs and breathalyse those people who have a car on the car park outside. Yeah, that we was what... Talk, well, we well, excuse me, Jimmy, wrong. Jimmy, Jimmy. That was what he said. Now, I don't know how you or I are able to perceive from that anything other than that very specific statement. Now, let's eliminate that, and if you wish to discuss it, tell me exactly what you've got to say. What I'd say is, a policeman outside each pub, right? And if he's... How many pubs are there in Lancashire? There's a lot, but it's How many pubs it. do you think there are? Yeah, it's worth How many it pubs do you think there are? I don't know. Well, well, if we, well listen a moment, accident. listen a moment. In order for us to have a policeman outside every pub, we would have to have many hundreds of thousands of policemen, yeah, more just, than we've got. Or just a policeman outside each big pub. Or we just do the big pubs, so that everyone then drinks in the little ones. Right, just listen, and if, if it, this policeman sees anybody who he thinks that aren't able to dry, drive, he can stop them, and if he thinks that it's right to breathalyse them, breathalyse them, and if they're... Well, you drunk. see, if, the, if there's only one policeman there, he's not going to be particularly busy, is he? Yeah, and he's going to do the one breath of lies, and all the others have gone. They all go at 11 o'clock. Wallop! 300 people hit the streets in their cars, the policeman stops one. Yeah, there's 299 drunks. Drunk drunk I have no idea. I'm not a frequenter of pubs, but I think you'd probably get a considerable number yeah, over the breath of lies. I don't know that it would night. save... I don't think it would save a lot. I think it would. I think what would happen is, whilst all the policemen were there, little old ladies would have their underwear stolen from their washing line, or their savings stolen from under their bed, because the police are all over the place, standing outside pubs. I don't think so. I reckon well, where, are we going to, where are we going to get all these extra policemen from? Please. Who's going to be asking for more police? Yes, they never. are asking. Of course they are. They're asking at the moment, so they can deal with the ever-increasing major crime rate. Would you like to answer the question I put to you, and that is, where are we going to get all these extra policemen? Well, there's so many people on dole these days, I think they've So got you're suggesting that we just we just say anyone on the dole, you can be a bobby if you want? No, I mean... No, so, people, so... There's okay, a lot of people so, at college so tell me then, trying to get, Jimmy, a, get into a police... tell me then, who, who's going to pay for all these extra police? Government. They've got them on there, I know. Where do they get it from, do you think? They have manufactured... No, I asked you where they get it from. Well, I'm not sure. Where do you think they get it from, this money that the government appear to well, have? Well, they're giving offer to air, don't they? No, would all. you like to just answer the question, Jimmy? I know it's hard for you, because you don't know the answer, because you're thick as pig muck, but here it is again, just in case you hit upon the answer at random. Where are they going to get the money from? If, if they can't get it, like... Good ready. night, cretin. How do Simon? Hello, Simon. Hello, Alan. What do you want? Uh, I'd like to talk about working and claiming the toll, so... Then talk. Well, I just think I just think it's right, and then think, you yeah. are a pig's bum. I'll do Fiona. Hello, Alan. Yes. I'd just like to um, inform all your uh, scouser friends that I don't have any. That um, legalising cannabis will never become. Never become what? Well, will never become legalised because. Legalising cannabis will never become legalised. Well, they won't legalise it because when you you know when you're driving down the road and you get pulled up and you take a breathalyzer test then if you've been smoking cannabis, it slows your mind down and you're going to be driving around the road swerving about all over and they cannot tell that you have been smoking cannabis 
and there's going to be all sorts of crashes caused, just like it is drunk driving. So, just like to tell all. Why can't they tell? Could they tell with a bluff, a blood test? Well, no, they couldn't. How do you know? Well, I do. I asked you how. I don't know how, but I know. What? Where do you get the information from? Pardon? Where did you get the information from? Well, from books. I see. One wonders whether they're reliable. Perhaps some doctor would like to come on and tell us. Thank you for your call, Fiona. How do Paul? Hello, Alan. Hello. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question concerning a call that was about a month ago, I reckon. Ask you a question. Right. A man rung up and he seemed a bit worried about the fact that his wife had just had a black baby. And he was white and she's white. Do you remember it? Yes. You said that he was wrong to think that she'd been having an affair or... I didn't say that. Yeah. I didn't say that. Well, <laughs> you said that he was worried. He, he, he thought well, she must have had an affair. never mind what he was doing. Never mind, never mind what he was doing. You've misquoted me so far. Tell me now what you think I said. I don't know what you said. Well, what I said was, it I'll is. Tell you what I will, then. I'll tell you what I did say, and that is that it is possible for white parents yeah, okay, to create yeah, a right. white child. That's that. all I said. Yes, you did say that. I know I did. But you said that a woman who lived near you when you was a child, or a young man. I actually said a family. Go on. A family. That, well, the woman had a black baby. That is correct. Yeah. Well, how do you know she hadn't been knocking about with someone? I don't know for certain, but it was not fought locally, if you like, in the community that she had, and the kind of community I come from, I feel sure, would have thought that, if there was any evidence. She was known, her reputation was that of a woman who was, if you like, loyal and faithful. You know, so no one would have been You can never be to. sure, can you? Well, the answer is you cannot. But in your own mind, you're certain that... In my mind, which well, at the time of the, if you like, experience, I didn't have enough knowledge. I didn't have enough experience to formulate an opinion. However, the opinion of those who were around at the time and did have the maturity to do so is that the family had what we used to call, or what we called at the time, a throwback. I don't know what it was thrown back from, but that's what it was called. And it wasn't thought that that family, or that woman, had been out with a, a black person. Well, yeah, fair enough, but... However, I have to concede that, of course, it is within the realms of possibility. Okay, fair enough. Okay? Yeah. Cheers. Ta-da. So. I'll do Nick. Hello, how are you diddling? I'm diddling fine. Uh, I'd like to talk about the death. There goes another one in the 300 car challenge at Mr. Smith, the Nissan Man. And another 20 pounds to the National Children's Home. Every Thursday is over 30s night at the Illa Walla Country Club, the file's most sophisticated night spot. You don't have to be a member. Just come over this Thursday and pay only one pound admission between 9 and 11 to dance to your favourite oldies from the 60s and 70s. That's the over 30s night at the Illa Walla this Thursday at Skipple Road, Pilton Lafield. Oh, and don't forget, David Legg is guest DJ this Friday for the Merry Down Cider Party Night. There's half price cider all night, plus loads of prizes and giveaways. I'll do... S- Andrew. I'll do Andrew. Goodbye, Andrew. I'll do Steve. Uh, I'll do Alan. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like the show and the concept of the show where people phone in, but it's your attitude that gives me a problem. If you've got a problem, turn it off. No, no, it's not that. Uh, it's, it's just that why... And that dart was a cracker. 460! There's no mistake, Sid. Bradshaws really are offering Fiesta, Escort and Orion diesels with a whopping 460 pounds off. Really? 
Is that right? That's 100% right, sir. Bradshaws are now giving a fantastic discount on Fiesta Escort and Orion Diesels at Marsh Lane, Braston. Why is everyone leaving so quickly? I think they're all darting off to Bradshaws. Bradshaws, phone 54083. Country Music Acts, have you entered the Red Rose Radio Frontierland Talent Competition yet? Remember, the first prize is a holiday for two in Nashville, USA, courtesy of Transamerica Holidays and National Travel World, plus a two-day recording session at Avenue Parade Recording Studios in Accrington for broadcast on My Country Choice program, and the opportunity for regular work at Frontierland, Morecambe's Wild West Theme Park. Heats are on Sunday afternoons in August at Frontierland, and each heat winner will walk away with £50 and go through to the final. Just send details of your act with your name and address to me, Mike Tunstall, Red Rose Radio, P.O. Box 301, St. Paul Square in Preston. Do it now. We need your entry before the 24th of July, and you could be on your way to Nashville. How do, Ian? Hi, Alan. Um, first thing, drunk driving. Um, successive, successive governments have been um, doing down public transport, and as a result, I think they're reluctant to penalise drunk driving. Um, I think the only real cure to drunk driving is to ban people for life if they're ever convicted for drunk driving. I don't think banning for life will actually achieve that, because if you're banned for a period of time that you can see the end of, you may actually obey the ban. But if the ban is forever, you are more than likely going to start driving again before the ban has expired. That is very true, but that is only true while there isn't a, an effective public transport system. No, it's not only true while there isn't. First of all, we're not going to get what you would define as an effective public transport system, so in the ideal world that you would like to create, your plan might be assisted. However, you're not going to get that world, you're going to have to live in the real world, and in the real world, your plan won't work. Um, I beg to differ on that. And so you actually think that the chances of a life ban would prevent people from drink driving? Oh, I think so. I um, don't. If you take 25 years ago, for instance, there were mm -hmm. 7,500 uh, stations on British Rail, and the British Rail... No, we're not talking about public transport. Yeah, I've um, already said to you that if public transport was considerably better than it is, yeah. it may well enable your plan to work a little more than without public transport, but you're not going to get that. You are not going to get an improvement in right. public transport. So let's say in the world we live, there isn't going to be that assistance, but uh, your plan won't work. Um, well, the, whole, the whole point of what I'm saying is, is, is that the only reason it won't work is, is, is that uh, they won't legislate for a decent penalty for drunk driving while they're trying to do away with a reasonable public transport system. And successive governments, as I say, have been um, demolishing the public transport system for the past 20, 30 years. But that, I'm sorry, you're, too arg you're relating two things, which, as far as I can see, are not directly related. They may well have some superficial contact with each other, but well, beyond that... I say it well, different. obviously you wouldn't, otherwise you wouldn't be prattling on about it, but I don't think public transport has much of an effect on drunk driving. Well, if, if people weren't reliant on public transport, then they'd be free to drink what they could. Don't um, you mean if they were reliant upon it? If, if they were reliant on public transport. Yeah, because you said if they weren't. Right. If they weren't reliant on pu private transport. Yes. Yeah. Um, they'd be free to drink what they wanted. And, all oh, right. Um, but it doesn't matter how good public transport is, it's never going to be as good as door-to-door -door service with your own car when you want to travel. Uh, and people will still choose their own service. That, that Indeed, opens, that the, the degree, well let me say to you, the degree of car ownership in the city of Sheffield, which for a length of time had the best public transport outside London, when that public transport system was improved drastically and fares cut unbelievably low so i think it was sixpence the, the fare from anywhere in the city uh, the level of car ownership did not diminish well that's true but um public transport there is very local uh, on a city basis on a nationwide basis you've still got to get from sheffield to manchester sheffield to london but people don't get 
smack balling drunk in London and drive home to Sheffield. Uh, I beg to differ there. I, well, I, I, would have I thought, work in the computer industry. I would have thought that there were not that many. I and know it ain't a lot of people. Well, he, well, what do you mean a lot? I know. I, I, what do you I mean a lot? Uh, a lot, I would say. You're telling me that we should create a public transport system where there's a bus every quarter of an hour from London to Sheffield because of all the computer programmers they get pissed. Don't talk stupid. No. I'll do line three. Ben. Hello. Yes. Um, well, I'll talk about Alan's my car. I've, I've just bought a new um, XR2 and um, I keep, every time I use it to go out in it, well, it's, well, it's a mother's, I've gone half of it, you know. Every time I go out of it, I always get these prats coming up behind me in minis. Over trying to overtake, you know. Oh, what a poser. It must be awful when the only thing you've got to shout about is the fact that you own a poser's car. Listen, Pratt, if you want to get your rocks off, then by all means do so, but don't clutter up my programme with your pure eye limit or garbage. How do Luca? Hello. Uh, uh, I can talk to you about abortion. It's, I think it's foul. It's disgusting. I mean, they don't have one. How do Diane? Hello, Diane? Goodbye, Diane. We really haven't got all night to wait for you. I'll do peace. Hello? Hello. I'm a piece of broccoli. You're a piece of what? Broccoli. Yes, I'm sure you are. And I'm a caterpillar. Presenting in the worst possible taste. A present for your most loathed companion. Watch them squirm with agony and cringe with anguish. Besic's Big Blue Cassette. Checks on personal orders for £3.99, payable to Red Rose Productions. And available now from Red Rose Radio Reception. Besic's Big Blue Cassette. Listen at your own peril. I'll do Vincent. Hello, Alan. Uh, I, I would like you not to cut me off, because I'm, I'm not going to be that offensive. That is how they all feel. What do you want? I would like to ask you, what do you think about prisoners? I don't answer, question, I don't answer questions that start, what do you think of? If okay. you've got an opinion, I'd like to hear it. But given that there isn't time now to discuss yeah. it, if you stay where you are, I'll yeah. come back to you after the midnight news, which we are about to join London's independent radio news to find out what's happening in London, because they rarely tell us about anywhere else. I'll be back with you in about three minutes. <laughs> Midnight News, this is Alan King. Political observers in Washington now say President Reagan's off the hook after one of his former White House aides took full blame for the illegal diversion of funds to rebels in Nicaragua. Admiral John Poindexter has told the Irangate hearings that the buck stops here with me because he deliberately kept the president in the dark. I made the decision. I, I felt that I had the authority to do it. I thought it was a good idea. I was convinced that the president would, in the end, think it was a good idea. But I did not want him to be associated with the decision. Although Admiral Poindexter's testimony on the crucial issue is seen as putting the president in the clear, Mr. Reagan himself has shown no surprise. After watching the proceedings on TV, he told reporters, what's new about that? I've been saying it for seven months. The government says there's no need to worry about the radioactive dust being used on army training exercises. Armed Forces Minister Roger Freeman says it's needed to train key personnel on how to deal with the fallout from a nuclear attack or an accident like Chernobyl. He says people have far more to fear from smoking a cigarette. It's very low level, only on MOD property. No one harmed, no one's subjected to a harmful dosage, and the general public outside the MOD perimeters have got nothing to worry about. Indeed, they should sleep safer in their beds at night, knowing that at least we have exercised our servicemen and civilians in being prepared for the consequences, uh, heaven forbid, of a nuclear attack. The government's ordered a further investigation into the RUC following allegations of a shoot-to-kill policy against terrorists in Northern Ireland. Ulster Secretary Tom King has agreed that procedures must be closely looked at in the light of an official report. From Westminster, Judith Dawson. 
Allegations that the RUC was deliberately shooting to kill have been surrounded by controversy. Deputy Chief Constable John Stalker was taken off the case after being interrogated about his possible links with criminals. Now the official report by Assistant Chief Constable Colin Sampson is in front of the government. They are being cagey about its conclusions, saying merely that aspects of the RUC's actions must once again be investigated. Judith Dawson, IRN, Westminster. A solicitor has told the High Court jury that he spotted Geoffrey Archer with prostitute Monica Coughlin in a London street. The former deputy leader of the Conservative Party has denied, in his libel action against the Star newspaper, that he ever met the Vice Girl. But the court's also been told that he once admitted that he had met Miss Coughlin. The evidence was given by Newsnight presenter Adam Raphael, who says he telephoned Mr Archer after the scandal broke last October. Britain's midwives have overwhelmingly rejected a call for routine age screening for all pregnant women, but the annual conference of the Royal College of Midwives has backed another demand that the deadly illness should be classified as an industrial disease, and they've decided to draw up guidelines for looking after women and children who have the AIDS virus. Independent Radio News. Bring him if you dare. Welcome to Thursday. It's just after midnight and the telephone number, if you wish to join us, is Preston 561000. And seeing as how it is Thursday now, let me tell you that later today at 6.30pm, that's this coming evening, I and the rest of the Red Rose team will be playing cricket at the Astley Village Cricket Club, which I think is actually the Exton Royal Ordnance Factory Sports Club. So we'll be there about 6.30 playing cricket against Astley Village Cricket Team. All the proceeds go to charity. We hope to see you there. Night time, the right time. Let everybody know you to Red Rose Radio. Let me go back to Vincent. Hello again. Is that right? Um, I apologise for asking your opinion. It's all right, I, don't I, worry. I was going to ask your opinion. But, uh, you want to talk about can, prisoners? Yeah, if I can say this sincerely. I've spent many years of my life in prison. Um, Eleven years of my life in prison, to be truthful with it. I've just come out of Preston Prison today. I've been bailed today by a court, by an high court judge. Now, I spent four months on remand. My case, my, as my case goes, it, there's some doubt in my case. But... Um, are you there, that one? Yes, I am. Ham? Um, yes, I am. I'm about to say to you that we yeah. cannot discuss your case okay. because it's obviously pending and that is subjudice. I apologise. Can, can I change the subject and tell them to something similar but not as bad as that? Well, you okay. can talk... We don't need yeah. to talk in cases. We yeah. can talk in principles uh, about... About generally in prisons, Alan. Yeah, go on. Okay, I'll do that. Um, well, well, you know, uh, there's many, many prisoners spend a lot of time on, on remand. Um, I know of many prisoners that have spent 17 months on remand. And, uh, you know, they go to court and then, and then they found not guilty. And, you know, if they've got a, a criminal record, they, they cannot com uh, um, claim compensation because they've got a criminal record. Yeah, if they was, um, had no criminal record, then they can, com uh, com you know, they can claim compensation. But I, I feel it's wrong for a man who's been convicted of something to be... Um, because he's got a record, he, 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 he does 17 months on, on remand of, of, a, of a charge that he's charged with um, and, and, and found... Uh, are you there, Alan, yeah? Yes, I'm still here, yeah. listening. Uh, and he's found not guilty. Uh, I think it's a shame when a man can't do nothing because of, of a criminal record. Uh, I'm, I'm upset myself personally because, um, you know, I, I've been through it myself, truthfully. And I, Indeed, I, I but... Think he's wrong, Alan. I'm Let us. To you, I, I accept that. I, I to you if a person, if a person is charged with an offence, yeah. then I maintain, yeah. and I am I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. I maintain that there should be a time limit for the police to bring the case to court, yeah. or for the prosecuting yeah. like authorities, like the Scottish law, like right? the Scottish system. Yeah. Under the Mondays. And I think it is absolutely reprehensible, yeah. and in my view, immoral and unjust. Yeah that a judicial system imprisons people against their will yeah. 
not for their own protection, yeah. for something that as far as the law is concerned at that moment, they are innocent of. Yeah. Now obviously we do have to protect the public, we do have to protect the public first, second yeah. and last. The yeah. wishes of the accused are less important than the protection of the public. However, they still have some importance and I think there should be a time limit. As you say, it's 101 yeah. days say in what? Scotland and I don't see anything wrong with that yeah. system. If the Scottish police can get their act together, yeah. then the English well, police damn well should do more as well. Than, or more souls than the Scottish haven't. But uh, I, I could tell you cases and... Um, you well, know, there are dozens of them, are long, long time. There, there are literally yeah, hundreds of them. Can I just give it an example, Alan? And if you can, but don't name anyone. Uh, I won't name no names, sir. I, I know a certain person that was arrested for something... Uh, I'll give you a minor example of smashing a window. Uh, who's been a drunk all his life. Who's, like, spent six, seven months in custody. They could have dealt with him. They could have put him probably in a hospital. And, um... I'm, I'm, is that Alan? Yep. And I appreciate that um, you've not been prison yourself. Um, and I'm gone through hell, you know, because, because he's got a problem. He's gone in prison, he's mixing with people like myself, who have spent many, many year, years in prison, uh, through my own fault, and I've been banged to rights on many, many occasions. But it, it's upset me, and I, I'm, I'm human, I'm, I'm Italian, and I've, I've been very, I'm, I'm, I'm sociable, and I've all, I'm, I'm also very straight, but I, I, I've cried in there. I've cried and I've seen old men. I've seen men and walk and walking sticks. I've seen men that can't defend themselves. Um, I'm getting upset now, so I'm, I'd rather finish the conversation. Okay, Vincent. Thanks uh, for your call. I think, and and I'll just, can I just say something to you, Alan? Go on. You do a good job, and, and you're an awkward customer. You take some beating on the phone. <laughs> okay. but, um, I voted for you back. Good on you. Yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad you were out at the time. It made all the difference. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, Go on. I was in at the time and I voted for you from prison. Oh, oh, I'm not, I'm I'm not sure that one counts. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Good luck, yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Good on you, lads, if you're lying there on your plank. Hey, thank you very much for all your votes. I don't know how he did it. How do Neil? Hello, Alan. Yep. Um, I'm just wondering what you think about this situation on the... Uh, Don't ask me. Tell me what you think. Well, you know, the this... Uh, oh, well, I was just looking on the news tonight, and uh, they're making all these coins smaller. I was just wondering... Well, they're not, like, they've not actually said yet that they're going to make them smaller. That well, is the idea, know, well, and they're asking the public yeah. their opinion, which is remarkable. Absolutely mm. unique, I think. Mm. What well, do you think? I think they should um, bring back the uh, pound note. Why? Well, it's, it's more, um, it's easier, like, isn't it? I always find I've got a lot of change in me pocket and... Me well, I'd be grateful for a lot... I'd be a, l a lot of... grateful for a lot of change if it was those little brown circular coins. Mm. I could cope with those. And it, sometimes, yeah, with coins, if you, if you drop them or anything, they get sharp edges, and they rip your uh, pants to shreds, you know? Hmm. So well, send coins. them to me. Sorry? Send them to me. <laughs> and let them rip my trousers. Okay. All right, I'll Cheers. Thanks a lot. I'll do Andy. Uh, referring to a call uh, that was made last night, Alan, you said that... Uh, Andy, how old are you? Uh, 16. I don't believe you. What are you going to do to prove it? Uh, have a sensible conversation. Hmm. Let's try. Well, referring to the, a call made last night, you said that thickies are able to get into private schools by paying their way in. Well, in that... Andy, I, when we had that call last night, you agreed. Are you now disagree? Uh, no. Oh, so you're agreeing? Well, that in... Are in, you or aren't you? Are you agreeing or disagreeing? No, I'm not agreeing. No, you're not agreeing. But you did last night. I didn't. Well, somebody did. I'll do to another Andy. Hey, Howard. Yes. Uh, I was just in, inquiring about how you went on on Sunday at Cornford in the cricket match. We came second. You came second, so you lost. I don't like that phrase, it hurts. We came second. <laughs> I, heard, uh, I heard you got hit by a cricket ball. I did. One, from one of my friends, and you don't like him now. I didn't like him before, but I like him a lot less now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alan. OK, cheers, now. Now, mate. Sure. I'll do. And don't forget, we're playing cricket tomorrow at the Astley Village, or against Astley Village cricket team, and that is at ROF.
Do you remember those wonderful summer evenings of years gone by? Well, there's a chance to relive them at Killay Court this Thursday. Enjoy a delicious barbecue in the garden from 8pm, then join me, Sally Moon, in the Killay's nightclub, where I'll be playing all the very best music from the 50s, the 60s and the 70s till 1am. So I look forward to seeing you at Killay Court, Chorley Road, Standish. Phone Standish 423083. Whether you're considering a Citroen, Lada or Ford for E-Day on August the 1st, give the rest the big E for John Wilding. Right now, John Wilding is getting all excited by offering truly exceptional deals on all three of these makes, along with extremely low finance on selected models. You're always guaranteed John Wilding's excellent after-sales service too, and exceedingly generous part exchange allowances. So see how easy John Wilding makes buying E-Reg cars with Citroen and Lada at Banbury Garage, Westgate Morecambe, and Ford on the A6 Gar it's the time that you take It's a coke, it's a break It's a pause in the beat A cool from the heat Ah, oh, just what I need It's the hit, Coca-Cola is it It's put them on hold That coke is ice cold It's let the drink wait Don't care if I'm late It's just how you feel It's the break that's for real It's a kick, it's a hit, it's a go It's a kick How do, Michael? Hello, Alan. Yes? I'd like to talk about public exams, in particular the O-levels. Go on. Well, I've just sat mine, and I don't think that they're a fair uh, assessment of your education. You'll be glad you got rid of them, then. Well, yeah, but I still don't think that the GCSEs are doing much better. But you accept that they are doing some bit better? They are. Uh, what would they have to do to convince you they were better? Completely provided. satisfactory? I believe that they should provide a continual assessment throughout your school career from when you start to when you finish. They do, do they not? Not at the moment, they do. No, we're not talking about at the moment. We're talking about the GCSE. No, it's only for the last two years of the course. Well, perhaps the last two years are all that are necessary. Well, they might not be. If you were a genius in the first and second year and as thick as pig mock in the third and fourth year, I wouldn't employ you. Because no, I would say your last two years are crap. I'm only interested in what you did for the last two years, whether that's any good or not. Yeah, let, us, let us suggest that you were an 11-year-old, very reluctant to learn, and then you suddenly grew up at 12. Yeah, well, it proves you're maturing. It proves you're maturing. Yeah. But if you have a continued assessment, which includes all of that, you will end up with a mean average that is lower than what you actually deserve. No, not really. Yes, really. No, because it would change as you get higher up. It would change, indeed it would change. Yeah. But if it was an assessment of all four years, and one of those years, the first one was a bad one, that would bring down the overall average. Let us just take it on a basis of examination results. If you passed your exams and got 100% for the four years, then your average result is 100%, is it not? Yeah. If you passed your exams for the last three years, your average result was 300, but you got none in the first year, you came bottom with no marks, then your average has gone down quite appreciably, hasn't it? Well, no, because that's... Yes, it has. Thing. What is your average result? 300 no, they divided take 300. Into account change. They don't have to take into account if they only assess the last two years. Yeah, but that's not really fair because... Well, the, the world isn't fair, yeah, but, the, the but I think it is fair. I think it is fairer than actually having a system where you pay the price of what you did in the first year five years later. Yeah, but exams are not really fair. I mean, I've got... Well, we're not, at the moment, we are not debating the exam system. We are, at this moment, debating the length of time of assessment of the continued assessment principle. No, that, that was just one subject. Well, on we, are st we are still dealing with that and we haven't resolved it. You will what? never pass any exam if you have not the ability to concentrate on one subject until it is resolved. Well, I, I... You don't even understand it's not resolved, do you? Yes, I do. You do? Yeah. Why isn't it resolved? Because it, it's not a, it doesn't work out over the whole period because a bad mark in one exam could ruin you for the whole thing. Yes. So are you now s accepting that that, therefore, would be an unacceptable penalty? Not totally. Then what are you accepting? I'm accepting that you sh maybe you shouldn't get a set mark at the end of the year. They should take into account previous years. So if you're improving, then you maybe have a separate system for saying how you improve over the years so that your employer can see whether as you age 
you get better, or if you age, you get worse. Indeed, you are on an ascending or a descending scale. Yeah. But surely what your employer is interested in is what you can do now. What you could do doesn't matter. No, but what you could do provides a very good indication of what you will do. No, it doesn't. It should do. It shouldn't. Well, in the case of the majority, it does. If you got an 11-year-old and assessed their capability, I very much doubt that that capability would have any relevance four years later. Yeah. All you want to know when you give the guy a job is what's he like now. Yeah, well, if you've had your continual assessment, you will If know. you've had your continual assessment, you merely have a history that is worth nothing. What you want to know is what's the guy like now. No, you have a history that tells you whether the guy works hard or he's... You can have that anyway. Not with the present system. Yes, you can. No. Yes, you, when you go for a job, you get a reference from your school. Yeah. And the reference explains what you're like as a pupil. All the examination or the continued assessment of GCSE is going to do is talk about your academic achievements. What you're like as a pupil will not be examined. That will still be a value judgment and opinion passed by the teachers, collectively or singularly. Yeah, but that... That's not really fair, really, because... Well, it isn't going to change that. Well, no, the, system, can... the system of references is entrenched. It's not going to change. If you go for a job, they will get a reference from your school. Whether the GCSE continuous assessment system is brought in to your satisfaction or not, they will still get a reference. Yeah, but, I mean, anyone can put up a face in before teachers. Doesn't Indeed. They, well, I'm sorry. If you're now attacking the reference system, attack it till you're blue in the face. That is the system that jobs are handed out on in this country. Rightly or wrongly, it's here to stay, I promise you. Yeah, well, I think it's wrong and it should be. Fine. Be well, I suggest you gas yourself or emigrate, because you're going to have to live with that system, whether you like it or not. Not necessarily. OK, then die with the system. You accept it or you reject it, but you're damn well going to have to do it. Because when you go for a job, you're going to be asked for references. If you don't supply any, you won't get the job. Why? If they change the system... They, were not going, they are not going to change the appointment system. Why not? Because they believe in it. Well, the, the they're not going to change... Yeah, they believe going in the government, that doesn't mean they Let can't change the government. Michael, Michael, the appointment system of obtaining references from former employers, friends, colleagues, what have you, is so entrenched that it is even more entrenched than the government. It is not a political decision. It is not a changing decision. It's been with us for many, many years, and it's not going to go away. And I suggest if you're setting out with the objective of bypassing that system, you will bypass employment. How do... Nigel. How do, Alan? What do you want? I'd just like to talk about, you know, cruelty to animals. What do you think about it? I don't think about it. Well, you know, I was watching this programme, you know, two weeks well, ago. Well, you wanted to know what I think about it. Yeah. I've told you. The conversation's ended, hasn't it? You made your inquiry, you have your answer. Yeah. But, oh, no, I don't, I'm not interested in what you think about it. You've asked me my opinion. I've told you I haven't really got one. And I'm not interested in yours. Yeah. I've got a joke for you anyway, Alan. Have you? Good. I won't hear it, unfortunately. How do Gary? Uh, good evening, Alan. I just wonder if you, or any of your listeners, could settle a bit of a disagreement I'm having with my wife about, I reckon that Pam's people off the top of the pop show on BBC One was founded in the 70s, and my wife reckons they were formed in the 60s. I wonder if you could help, please. Somebody may be able to tell us. I seem to recall watching them in the 60s, to be honest, but we may well beg to differ. So if you know about Pam's people and when they were formed... Gary wants to know. The telephone number is, of course, Preston 561000. OK, Gary? Thank you very much, Thank Alan. you. ta Good night. Please listen to my ditty. It may not be very witty, nor even slightly funny, but it will help save you money. For me, from cradle to grave, I aim to shop and save. I buy out I need, for next and out indeed. There's meat and veg and cheese and picks and booze and clothes and cards and sweets and pigs and pet food and household things. So shop and save a load down Blackpool's Waterloo Road. In the market they call new and over at road the M2. Thank you. Poetry in prices. From the new market and M2 market. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. From Teledisc comes the Shadow Silver Album. This exclusive double album celebrates over 25 years of continuing success, featuring the Shadows as they are today. <laughs> At 
admire the sheer virtuosity of the theme from The Deer Hunter, classical gas, and don't cry for me Argentina as you enjoy the sound that influenced a generation. Appreciate over 90 minutes of musical mastery and remarkable craftsmanship on two superb records or double play cassette. Shadow's Silver Album is $8.99, including postage and packing, and is not available in the shops. So to order, ring us now on 051-708-7676. That number again, 051-708-7676. The Munich Beer Festival is famous throughout the world for everyone to have a good time. There's more barrels than at the OK Corral, and departure dates are the 17th or the 24th of September or the 1st of October. You'll stay at the classy Gastov Zillertal in Strass, if we can drag you away from the bar, that is. And the cost, half board, is just £99. But make sure you ring Avalon Travel today, because this is on a first-come, first-served basis. Get it? Avalon Travel, phone Bolton, 398788. How do Radindra? Oh, hello, Alan. Hello. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to discuss with you the subject of the decriminalisation of cannabis in this country. Go on. Uh, what, what I would propose uh, would be to decriminalise it, but in view of the uh, ob obvious possible dangers to youngsters, put like a, a 21 uh, age limit on it. A 21? Yeah, for instance. Limit. Why 21 as opposed to 18 as well, it is for alcohol? Yeah, I 18 suggest for alcohol, yeah. That's, this is the thing. I think you have to acknowledge that it, it is, uh, you know, it, it's a lot, of, a lot of people in this country think of it, that think of cannabis as sort of like an automatic association with heroin or, or whatever. But know, they're wrong. Well, they are. I mean, there's... So like, what's the point of legislating for inaccurate public opinion? Because it would probably get get there right sooner. <laughs> it would probably pass, uh, get into law sooner. But if public opinion is against it getting into law, and that appears to be your view, then why should it go into law? Public opinion is what matters, not what a minority that use this noxious substance. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, you have to start somewhere, you know what I mean? Well, you don't have to start somewhere if the majority of the public don't want you to. Well, if you're telling me that there would be resistance from public opinion to the legalisation of cannabis or the decriminalisation of cannabis, then public opinion has the right to prevail, does it not? Yeah, ob obviously it does. But so we, we live in a quasi-democracy. <coughs> quasi if the majority of the population don't want something, then we don't have it, surely. That's true, but I mean, the, 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 the basis on which it's, it is a criminal offence to possess it or supply it, or, well, not supply it, but possess it, I mean, that, that, on what basis... What, why? Why? Why is it so? I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't it doesn't harm people. Well, we don't know that to be the case. Well, there's no. Yeah, but like like. We don't know that to be the case. Likewise, we there's no proof to say that it is is a harmful substance. That is correct. I mean, they've been trying for years to to get that, you know, to get that proof, and they still haven't come up with it. But as it stands at the moment, we need a reason. I mean, why it became criminal is irrelevant. We need a reason to decriminalise it, and we haven't got a reason. Well, if something's criminal, it is sort of. Uh, we still need a reason to... to being harmful. It, it, no, that's not, not necessarily the case. It is against public opinion. Is sufficient for it to be criminal. Crim oh, I'd, I'm not sure about that. I mean, well, whether it should be or not is a separate issue, but clearly it is criminal, and clearly it is against public opinion. That can't just be a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> You have been Besicked. Don't worry, Redindra. It's painless and it's a fairly frequent event. How do Rupert? Hello, Alan. Um, Hello. I'd like to talk about diets, if I may. Um, I don't know if you've heard recently, but um, there's meant to be a lot of controversy about um, a lot of the diets on the market are meant to have been, you know, being banned. Now, I'm a distributor for a diet company. I'm not going to name that, obviously. And I'd just like to know if you've actually heard anything about it, because there's so many diets on the market, each one claiming, you know, that they're better than the others. 
Um, in America, I do know that there's only like two main diets that are actually allowed to be sold um, due to the other ones having, you know, different side effects, etc. Um, and I wondered, is, is, there anything, is there any way I can find out um, what diet does what, if you know what I mean? Um, how to go about it, if, if, if I should be selling it, you know, if you, do you understand what I mean? As far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't be selling diets at all. Yeah, well, it's... Glendon Motors, Peugeot, Albert. You get lots more for your money at Glendon Motors, and especially this month with 0% finance on a choice of petrol 309s from the economical 1100s and 1300s to the sporting 1600s. Ask for written details. Make the most of this fabulous opportunity and bring your used car because we're giving unbelievable part exchange prices. Remember, 0% finance and top part exchange prices only at Glendon Motors, Blackpool Road, Preston. Phone 735 811. Glendon Motors, Peugeot, Albert. Thinking of changing your hi-fi? Call into Lang Video Audio at Crumpton Street, Wigan and Nesley Street, Bolton, the North's leading part exchange hi-fi specialist. Ring Wigan 323-897 for details now. Hello there. I'm just having my HGV driving lesson with North Manchester HGV. They do hourly lessons and intensive courses to put you on the right road. If you're an HGV or PSV novice, for just £30, you can have a full two-hour assessment, including licence and medical fee. Now, if you pass with them, they'll guarantee you a job interview. So, what are you waiting for? Ring North Manchester HGV Training Centre on Bolton 23235. That's Bolton 23235. If you've been following the great video recorder competition on The Breakfast Show, don't miss it tomorrow when I'll be setting the next question. Once you've got all ten answers, you're in with a great chance of winning a JVC video recorder worth over £350. The Paul Fairburn Breakfast Show, the radio show with its very own video. How do Carol? Hiya. Um, I've been watching a programme tonight on the television and it was about anorexia. And there was a girl, she got that bad, they took her into hospital... And in the end, she died. And I was wondering, can they not make her eat? No. Why is that? Because, what do you mean by make her eat? They can force feed her. Yeah, but she went in and then she came back out again and then she started taking these Senecot, I think they was, yeah. and making herself sick. And then she went back in and then she was out again. And then in the end, she just went to nothing and died. And I thought, well, perhaps they could have done more for her. But what? Well, fed her and... I don't know, really. I just thought they wouldn't let anybody die like that. I thought... They have to eventually, if a person isn't prepared to take food yeah. or is going to make themselves ill and sick, it is incurable. Or yeah. it can be incurable. I know a number of people that have actually overcome anorexia nervosa, but it is potentially lethal. Yeah. And there is no cure. And just to force feed them isn't the solution. Oh, oh I didn't know that. No. OK, then. All right, Thanks love. Lot. Sorry. Bye. I'll do Rod. Uh, how do, Alan? I'd like to talk about unidentified flying objects, please. Go on. Well, I had a strange experience about, about a week ago. Yeah, I think it was last Thursday, and...